the Senate, the House, they have the votes to raise the debt ceiling. Unfortunately, they also have the votes to fundamentally weaken the greatest economic engine in world history. What they do not have the votes to do is to force Republicans to be complicit with their reckless spending spree. Killing the goose that lays the golden eggs isn't just bad for the goose. It's bad for everyone who depends on the eggs as well. There is nothing compassionate about spending money we don't have on new benefits we can't afford, all the while discouraging work and increasing the likelihood of a future default when the yet-to-be-born American receives the bill for benefits she didn't experience and are no longer available. It's also important to note that our labor force participation rate is down, not up, even with the new programs and the payouts that I heard this morning during this hearing that somehow is supposedly increasing our labor force participation when in fact it's apparent and clear to Americans that's not the case. Uh, Chair Powell, you know as well as I do and certainly maybe neither one of us knows as well as the folks working paycheck to paycheck around this nation or the seniors depending on their social security checks to make their ends meet, that inflation is having a devastating impact on people on fixed income, people working paycheck to paycheck. I think about the fact that <clears throat> gas prices are over 40% as a nation. And frankly, over the last few days, we've seen signs that it's going to only get worse, not better. The gas prices are going up over $3 a gallon in so many parts of this country. And frankly, even higher in other parts. The fact that food, whether it's bacon or fish, meat, all are up double digits. Can you point to any specific policies put in place by the current administration that may be exacerbating the runaway rise in food and energy prices in recent months? Senator, that, that wouldn't be for me to do, but I, I, uh, I think those things are, I, I wouldn't be identifying policies of the current administration. Uh, would you agree that the fact is that when we have limited supply and an increasing demand, uh, that a $1.9 trillion COVID relief that spent less than 1% on vaccines and 9% on COVID-related health only adds more, more pressure on our markets, and that pressure results in higher inflation? Senator, we have, we have some really difficult and important jobs, but it, one of them is not commenting on fiscal policy, I'm sorry to say, with respect. I do think that it does include inflation and employment. Are those two major aspects of being the chairman of the Those are the Reserve? two major aspects. Indeed. And so when you see policies that are put in place that has not increased our labor force participation but decreased our labor force participation rates, and you see policies that are actually designed so I heard earlier this morning to put people back at work. In fact, that number is going down. You see that the impact of the inflationary, what I thought was transitory, that's what we heard earlier this year when I asked you all both the question about uh, inflation in this country. It seems to me that we're heading in the wrong direction. Let me ask Secretary Yellen. The face of spiking inflation, slowing growth, lingering high employment, high unemployment, and historic levels of government spending and government debt, how do we justify supporting President Biden's $3.5 trillion tax and spend package? Well, first of all, the package is paid for. So um, there's... How, how is it paid for, ma'am? There are increases in taxation on corporations may I ask you a question? and high-income individuals. Let me, let me ask you a question on that while I have you here. Uh, do you think that taking the cap gains tax from 23.8% to 43.8% will encourage more investment in our economy or, or less investment in our economy? Do you think that taking the corporate tax from 21% to 28% will actually, uh, we both recognize that corporations, they may write the check, but the people who pay the tax are the consumers and the employees with fewer wages, fewer increases in wages and lower benefits. Uh, how, how do we think that these higher taxes are going to lead to uh, more opportunities in our marketplace? Well. Um, for, first of all, I think that the likely impact on investment spending is very small. And I think uh, in 2017, when taxes were cut substantially, you did not see any surge in investment spending. 
Instead, what you saw was a surge in stock buybacks. Um, so the linkage between um, investment spending and the corporate tax rate is really very modest. Namely, it falls on excess profits. Yes. So I think the Biden package, the Build Back Better package, um, will improve corporate competitiveness because it's going to invest in critical um, infrastructure Thank in you. our economy. Thank you, Yell. I don't want to cut you off, but I have no choice because uh, Chairman Brown is going to cut me off. So before I lose uh, lose my time here, and thank you, Chairman, for you already have lost your time, but proceed, Senator Scott. You are a patient, Chairman, and I appreciate that more than I can say. I'm so glad that you brought up the 2017 tax uh, reform package that we worked so hard on. Bottom line is, I would say that someone who uh, that, someone who watches the market, and I know you watch it very closely. Uh, the fact is that in 2018, 2019, we saw more revenue to the government, not fewer dollars to the government. And to think that taking the corporate tax from 21 to 28 percent is somehow going to make us more competitive against our OECD competitors, I know that you have a, a strategy to raise our, our guilty and, and make us more competitive somehow by having other countries agree to higher taxes. I'll just say that the proof will be in the pudding, and maybe you and I will be here in a couple of years to have a conversation about the results of the tax increase that will make us less competitive, not more competitive. But thank you for your graciousness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.